what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for the day. If you're new to the channel, uninitiated or unfamiliar, I do 3D printing here at home, stuff to improve my life, fix stuff around the house, sell for money sometimes, or just generally show off, have a good time. If you're interested in any of those things, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So I wanted to do a little quick filler inner vlog today. Uh, Orange Storm Gig is obviously a big focus right now, but I'm doing some other prints along the way and I wanted to highlight those uh, just to kind of keep everybody abreast of what's going on in the world today. As you saw over there on the P1P, we're gonna take a look at that project. I have no idea, this is supposed to be red. <laughs> um, and you saw here the update had failed. Um, so I'm guessing maybe that had something to do with it, but just printing a new toupee for me because I noticed in some of the time lapses, your boy's kind of losing it back there, but hey, Real men lose their hair, right? So I'm not too sure what's going on there. Just probably a restart should fix it because I just pulled a print off of it yesterday and it ran fine. Over here on the Flash Forge 85M Pro, my pet G machine, got a special little adapter here. Gonna take a look at that. Gonna, and that has to do, a lot of these prints have to do with the Orange Storm Giga. While we're in here, let's go ahead and take a look at the progress, I guess you could say, of the Giga. Last we left off, we were starting to wire up our Kraken. This is the Big Tree Tech Kraken. Thank you very much to Big Tree Tech for sending over the Kraken. Link in the description below. This board's widely regarded as, you know, kind of a, um, a big beefy board. And at 120 bucks versus like a comparable octopus or something like that, that's around like the 50, 60 range. I figured it's not too much more to go ahead and get into something that I know is gonna be powerful enough to run it. Uh, so been wiring that up. Got a lot of the connectors set, uh, you know, what GPT could tell me anyway, but I'm starting to run into some issues as it pertains to the print head. So you can see over here, I got kind of a big mess of parts and whatnots going on, uh, cause I'm still waiting on the Luke's lab kit a couple days before that comes in, but I wanted to do as much as I possibly could before that. Went ahead and started tearing down the Orange Storm Gigas print head. So I have three of these. Um, you know, I got one replacement from Elegoo. I got one, uh, just bought one piecemeal as a backup. And then I have the original one, which is in complete pieces. So this is the, uh, the previous one. Decided to go ahead and make this one the donor and the guide calls for taking off and using the stock tool board from the Orange Storm Giga in the Luke's lab kit. Reading a lot and you know talking to a couple people, Special thanks to three, what's his name again? What's my name again? What's my age again? That's the song. 3D by D. Thank you very much, 3D by D. 3D by D uh, appears to have be going through this process as well. Seems like he kind of stalled out on it and put it on the back burner for a while. Uh, but he had some good insight, a lot of other insight from other people trying this modification. They were saying that the tool board, you might run into some problems with it and it's maybe better to go straight for the EBB42 from Big Tree Tech. They didn't send me one but I did buy one on Amazon, it should get here today. So it's gonna be a matter of taking the stock, and I know this is like highly technical, uh, retro encabulator <laughs> type talk. Rockwell Automation's retro encabulator. The call for taking the uh, the proprietary cable that usually goes into the Orange Storm Giga here. This is a XT32 plus two connector. Uh, so I have to splice the XT32 plus two connector to go into my EBB42 and then modify it on the back end to the crack and break out the 24 volt power and break out the CAN bus uh, on separate JST XH connectors to go <laughs> directly into my Big Tree Tech Kraken uh, 1.1. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts in this, and I'm not, I don't have any experience with this. So let's focus on the easy, fun stuff first. This is the stock tool board from Elegoo. Has to go onto the Luke's lab plate because he sends you an aluminum plate. This is the stock plate. And so he has, because he's thinking you're going to use this. He has holes mounted for this stock Elegoo board, but my EBB42 uses four at the corner. So I took a EBB42 adapter, and then I just cut stupid ass holes in here uh, to mount it on there. So I should be able to adapt my EBB42 onto the new print head when it gets here. So prints like this, I printed a mount for the Kraken itself, adapting it to fit where the old Elegoo board was. And a lot of this stuff I'm designing on my own using prefab, you know, pinouts, placements uh, for these various popular uh, circuit boards. Did it and adapt it into the Giga 
doing a ton of stuff like that. And that's where, you know, having some familiarity with design. I mean, I use Tinkercad. I'm not using Fusion and stuff like that. But Tinkercad, it gets you by. I mean, it gets close enough. And if you're off a little bit, you just adjust it and reprint it. You know, you burn a few cents, burn a dollar here and there. Uh, prototyping stuff. But in the end, versus trying to use zip ties and chewing gum and MacGyver, that shit, uh, it's much better to do it this way. So this is in PETG, 100%. We'll wait till the EBB42 gets here to do that. And again, I know a lot of you guys probably are glazing over uh, with a lot of this highly technical stuff. The original machine had a base plate of pre-famulated amulite surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing. You're not interested in building printers. You're interested in using printers. Uh, but through this process, I'm hoping to demonstrate, you know, and maybe in the end, uh, uh, this will clearly demonstrate to people like, yeah, I don't even want to try this. This is way too much. So far, it's not too bad. Uh, you know, and I would, I would tell you if it's like, this is just way too much. When I get into the software, I kind of have some hesitation. I think maybe the software is going to be a real bear because I hate software. So far, the hardware stuff's not too bad. So going to be continuing on in that process, doing all these various things, highlighting in the vlog, and I will try to do like a dedicated sort of how-to video for people with gigas. Uh, but if you're following along in the vlog and just kind of want to watch me fumble through this, then, you know, enjoy. Also got one of these. I feel real smart with this thing on because I'm starting to lose my eyesight real close up. You know, I'm, uh, I'm advancing in age and I used to, I've always had perfect vision, but about right here, I start to lose it and here, nothing. I mean, I used to be able to see things like right here, but now it's, it's starting to go and you know, I don't want to get glasses because I'm not going to wear glasses and then take them on and off when I need to see things. I want, if I'm going to need glasses like that, I got to wear them all the time or never and I don't wear contacts because touching your eyeball, who does that? I can't do that. Other things too, a little modification to my Raspberry Pi enclosure. I added in the Pi Cam 3 port here, closed up the back, just tightened it up a little bit, nothing major there. Doing some splicing and wiring with that XT30 cable editing mat, put some, uh, put some roll right here. Pretty easy to do once you get the, uh, the process down. I'm really enjoying using butt connectors, solderless connectors. Uh, versus trying to do manual splices these you just put the wire in on both sides and crimp it down um, You know and that seems like it'll be okay We'll see in the future if it works out that way doing things like that to where I'm not having to actually solder I hate soldering because uh, I can I don't have the patience for waiting for the wires to heat up before I drop solder into it uh, So I like using the solderless stuff uh, Shrink tubes things like that works out great So for that print that failed over on the p1p is actually this so this is the uh, I guess the penultimate prototype uh, going into final, this back part is actually the final. I was mentioning in the last vlog, my buddy's dad is real into vintage Coke machines and he was trying to find a model. Uh, at first he said a Coke machine. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. I made him a basic Coke machine. He's like, no, 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 I need a 1959 model 81A Coke machine. I'm like, oh, okay, you want, you want something that's actually real. So I was able to come up with this, fed this, I fed a picture of it into Meshi. Uh, just to get the kind of like the the scale of these different parts. Um, I don't think my buddy's really happy with how it turned out. I think he had a uh, image in his head of like it being me being able to 3D print like a one for one actual model. And I'm sure if you're a designer, you could probably do that, but I'm not a designer. Uh, so I was able to come up with this, which is pretty close. Put a editing mat, put a picture right here. So the scale's pretty good and the this was the prototype. So I need, I had to make the text a little bit bigger because it's kind of whiffing a little bit on the actual Coca-Cola text. So I made that a little bit bigger. That's what we were trying to print over on the P1P. I'm not sure why it failed, because you know, it was trying to print red, I guess, I don't know, something to do with that update that failed, I don't know. The back portion looking great here, bamboo, matte red, scarlet red. Little, it's just a little desktop stash box. I actually just found a hinge and kind of adapted that into the design. And that way you can just put a piece of filament down in here and it acts as a hinge or a metal rod or whatever you want. But overall, not too bad. You know, it's pretty close. Um, it's certainly the closest. There's nothing exists like this in terms of 3D models. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finalize that print, give that to him. He seems okay with it. I sent him a picture and he seems all right with it. But uh, just a matter of getting that P1P settled because I have another job for the P1P that I'm eager to get to. And that's actually what I got going on here over on the A1. You see, I got my... Got my fancy camera set up going. Got my time lapse thing going on over here. Not too sure about this cool plate. This cool plate's been a little funny lately. It's uh, it's a little too sticky. You know, usually build plates over time start to get less sticky. 
This thing seems more sticky, a little too sticky for my liking. And these of course are for a Gooner doll. That's right. <laughs> Not, not quite, don't tune out just yet. So this is, I'll put the model right here. I bought this model because I was just browsing models looking for something cool to time lapse. And this came up and it's kind of on the edge. I mean, it's kind of like one of those type of models, but I saw it and I'm like, that's just super cool. I used to, I'm a former sport bike rider. Yeah, two time MotoGP champ, just kidding. I rode a, I rode a sport bike for like three years. Uh, thought I was hot shit and then, you know, just kind of sold it like most people do. Uh, young, dumb, and full of ham, so so to speak. Uh, but I, I kind of like the aesthetic. I thought it was super cool. Uh, and I'm like, you know, I want to print that because I don't care. A lot of people early on in the channel would give me crap about the Gooner dolls and whatever. Like, yo, I'm a grown man. I pay my taxes. I'm nice to people. You know, I do everything I'm supposed to do. If I want to print Gooner dolls, I'm going to print Gooner dolls because what are you doing? I like the way it looks and I'm going to do it. So I'm printing a Princess Peach biker chick uh, doll thing. Plus it might, it's, I think it could get views. I think it's a good short. Uh, so overall printing the parts here, very simple model, very well designed for FDM, easy to paint, very easy, sharp lines. You know, this is a, a hard layer height. And so you could see I did her suit in like a black and pink sort of thing. It's kind of like the Kill Bill sort of suit, but I did it in pink. So this is her like sitting on the bike, you know, and she's got her boots and stuff like that. It should be a pretty cool model, I think. Overall, mostly bamboo matte PLA. This is the matte pink. I've not really used this before. I'll cover up this part. Um, you know, some of the finer detail missing. I did miss, I forgot to paint the mushroom logo on her back jacket. I might reprint this with that because that's kind of a key component. But overall, <laughs> not bad. Um, you know, again, very simple paint. I uh, had to keep it to four colors because, you know, on this I have black, pink, flesh color, and I guess I could have done white, you know, with the uh, the mushroom logo there. But overall, you know, this is should look pretty cool. I'm printing over here on the A1 now parts for the sport bike itself, which is in red, I'm trying to keep it to four colors, but that's why I need the P1P because like her head, some of the finer details are hair. Uh, those plates are going to require five or six colors because when you print heads, you always have at least five colors because you have the whites of the eyes, the pupil color, black hair color, and flesh color. So that's at least five. So I do need the P1P for that. Fortunately, can't use any of the other four color type printers. And that's a real benefit of having the, uh, you know, the two AMSs on the bamboo machine. Makes a big difference for models like this because otherwise you would have to scale it. You'd have to, you know, sort of will it down to just those four colors and then you have black and white for the eyes and you have flesh color and then you have a hair color and that's it. And so you would never get colored eyes. They'd have to be one of those colors and it just doesn't look right. It just looks too plain and washed out in my opinion. So going to be working on that, going to get that on the P1P as soon as I can figure out what's wrong with it. Doing that on the A1, you know, if this video, this vlog comes out, it's likely, I mean, check my shorts to see if Biker Peach made it into the shorts. If it didn't, then you kind of know what happened. <laughs> Most definitely the name of the game, Orange Storm Giga, doing all my, you know, learning. Maybe I should get, enroll in like a, uh, a community college or something like that to, to learn how to do electronics. It's actually pretty intuitive. Um, you know, I've done work on fine electronics before. Not to this degree though, not to where I'm kind of plotting out stuff that it's on the PCB and then like splitting cables to adapt different boards to different things. This is certainly the most advanced thing I've done yet. Um, and it's good for the channel, I think. And it'll help me in reviews, I think as well. Like when I get printers for review, you know, going through this process, it'll just build that familiarity and then maybe I can spot potential deficiencies. Um, you know, if I want to even get that deep, if they pay me enough money, that is <laughs> to actually test the thing. So that's what I'm working on in 3d print additive technology land for the day. Love to know what you think about any or all of these things, kind of a short, just sort of filler video, filler vlog of what's going on here. But I feel like going into this, you know, the next three, four days, going to get a lot more parts rolling in and I can really kind of hit the ground running on getting some more progress on the orange storm giga. A lot of interest in it right now, and I want to capitalize on that. Let me know what you think about those things in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Technicals. See you next time. Retro Encabulator has now reached a high level of development.